Hello folks, in this video I want to talk about the differences between include and include once and require and require once. Okay, so this is from the previous video and if you missed it then you might need to type this out. What I have is just a very basic class that we've created. It's called greeting and it has a method called say hello here. I'm setting up this class, attaching it to a thing called greeting. And on this line here at line 11, I'm invoking say hello and I'm passing in the name of David. So that's what we've got so far. And if I take you to the test.php page, we've got something like this. That's straight from the last video. But if you missed it, well, no need to worry. That's all it is. Nothing special. Now what we'll do is we'll have a second file here which I am going to call test2.php. Here it is. And let's now just head over have a quick look at test2. Alright. And what we're going to do in test2 is some opening PHP tags and we're going to just say include and it's going to be test.php. Okay, so if we save and refresh, we get that. Now, some of you folks are not used to seeing this. Some of you folks are more used to seeing this type of syntax. That's absolutely fine. As I said back in the second video, I don't think things like this are really worth bothering about. And just code in the way that makes you feel good. For some reason, people have huge problems with that. Uh, to me, I think if you structure a site properly, trivial nonsense like that doesn't matter. So the same goes for require, by the way. We can say require test.php. It gives us this result. Or we can do it this way here, and it's exactly the same type of thing. I tend to use this method pretty much because... I started using PHP in 2003 and that's how all of the books were describing this stuff. And old habits die hard. But if you want to use something like that instead, please be my guest. Alright, so what's the difference between these? Well, let's suppose we say include, and I'm just going to include this thing two, three times. What do you think is going to happen? We'll save and refresh. Ah, <laughs> okay, so it's saying cannot redeclare the class greeting because the name is already in use, okay, so I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Now, if we change this to include once, then what happens is suddenly everything works. So when we do include once, it's going to say, okay, load this up. And then the second time this comes along, it's going to say, oh, well, we've already got it in memory. Let's just leave it. So include once is kind of a good idea, you know. Now, how about require? Well, here's what we'll do. I'm going to echo super cool like this, right? Now, if we save and refresh, we're going to get something like this. No surprises, right? Now, let's imagine that I have a file name here that's incorrect. I'll maybe add an X here, right? So this does not exist. Now, if I just save and refresh, you'll see that we get a warning. However, we still get super cool. So when we use include or include once, we're just going to get a warning. But the script will continue even if it cannot find the file. However, if we use require, and again, it doesn't matter if you write it like this if you want, doesn't matter, but when we use require, and if the file name is not correct, then we're going to have this fatal error, and this will not be invoked. So the difference between include and require is that Require, as the name suggests, requires that this file is present before 
the script can continue. Given that that's the case, it's usually a best practice to use require once most of the time. So that's that, and that is that. Let's try a little experiment here, okay? I want you to go into test just like I've done actually. I want you to say echo hello from test, we'll do a new line, like that, right? And then on test 2, I want you to just include test.php. Now you can write it whatever way makes you feel good, do it like that if you want, it doesn't bother me, right? But we're going to do that and let's do three of these, okay? So I'm going to just go like this and like this. Now, what do you think is going <laughs> to, to happen when I refresh this? Of course it's going to say it three times. And why is it doing that? Because each and every time it's just saying, okay, let's include that, let's include that, and let's include that. Now how about require? What do you reckon? That's right, it's going to be exactly the same the only difference is that if we have an error, it's going to stop when it cannot find the file. So for example, if I go like this, what's going to happen is it's going to run this one. That's going to say hello from test. Then it's going to go into the next one. It's going to run into an error and then we will not see this one at all. Let me just show you that. Okay, so here's the first one showing up, everything's fine. And then as soon as we run into that second error, because it's require, everything grinds to a halt. If we had said include, then if we save that and refresh, well, you can see that we still get a hello from test afterwards. All right, now here's one. What do you think? This is our little test thing before we go. What do you think is going to happen if we say include once? What do you reckon? You got it. It's going to just run this thing once. And then the second time around it's going to say, well hang on, we've already got this in memory, so why bother? What do you think is going to happen with require once? Same again. The only difference with require and include is that require will stop the script if it cannot find the file. So as a general rule, if you're using OOP, I think that it's best to go with require once most of the time. That would be my own choice anyway. Uh, if you're doing some kind of strange procedural programming, then include is perhaps a better option there. But for most instances, require once is the intelligent choice.